My name is Christian. Christian! Christian! It's the river of death! We must go through, there's no other way around! I can't make it through. No, Christian. I feel the bottom. We can make it. I can see the gate. My burden. I can feel it. My sins are sinking me to the bottom. I can't escape. No, Christian. Your burden is gone. Open your eyes. You're going to make it to the other side. No, it's too deep. I've been abandoned. My sin was too great. You have been made whole. Look there. He waits for you. He made a promise to you, Christian. Yes, Yes, I see him again. I see the other side. I see it. I... Well, why don't I tell you how my journey began? As I said before, my name is Christian. That's me, sitting under that tree there. I should be easy to spot because of that enormous burden on my back. That burden, you see, was my sin. It was full of the lies that I had told, the things that I had stolen, the curses that I would said. Not everyone had such a burden where I lived. They all had sin, but they didn't feel troubled by it like I did, so it wasn't a burden to them. You see, I had been given a book the Holy Bible, and as I read it I became more and more aware that the city I lived in was going to be destroyed by fire. That is where I lived, the city of destruction. Sure, it seems obvious now that this place was destined for death, but sin had blinded me. I realized that because of sin, the city and its people would soon perish. I knew I had to escape somehow. I would tried desperately to convince my wife of the destruction that was coming, but she enjoyed the world too much and didn't want to face the possibility of losing it. She called me a fool and thought of it no more. And so, I spent my days in the field, reading from my book, crying, not knowing what to do. It was that day that I met Evangelist. <sighs> what must I do to be saved? Um, excuse me, but what troubles you so much, young man? Well, you see, I've been reading this good book, and I know that I'm doomed to die for the sins that I carry, and I'm afraid that when I die, my burden will be so heavy that it will sink me lower than the grave. And so you would like to escape from this city, and also free yourself from that burden? Yes, but I can't see how that's possible. I am a wretched person. How can sin be undone? What hope is there for me? Well, do you see that light shining over the field? Go towards that light, and you will see a small gate. When you get there, knock, and you will be told what to do. Now, run, and don't look back. Well, look at that, Pliable. He's actually leaving this time. We should run after him, Obstinate, and bring him back with us. Just don't let him trick you with anything he says. 
I know how impressionable you are. Remember, he's not well in the head. <coughs> Neighbors, why are you here? We've come to take you back with us, of course. That's not possible. Your city is going to be destroyed by fire. Come with me, good neighbors. And leave our friends and comforts behind. What could you possibly be searching for that would be worth leaving the whole world behind you? All of this is worthless compared with just a small piece of what I hope to enjoy. I seek an inheritance in heaven away from this world. Read about it here in this book. Ha! Away with your book. Are you coming back with us or not? I cannot. Let's go, pliable. Well, wait a second, obstinate. What if what he says is true? Maybe we should go with him. What's this? More fools still? There's no telling where this brain-sick man will lead you. Very well, go on with him. You'll be back. Well, we should get going. You say that you know the way to this magnificent place? I've been told by a man named Evangelist to go to a gate, and we will be given instructions there. So tell me more about this place where we are going. Well, it is a place of eternal life. There is no suffering, no cruelty, none of the horrible things of this world. We will meet God and live in a place that He has prepared for us. Why would God want us to live with Him? Are you sure we will be welcome? We are His creation, His children. He wants nothing more than for us to seek Him. Won't He know about the bad things I've done? I've done evil things as well, but God must have a way to cleanse me, or there wouldn't be such a desire in my heart to find Him. I can only trust that he'll have a way to save me out of mercy. And you're sure that your book speaks the truth? It is written by God, and God cannot lie. I hope we will be there soon. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Is this your promised land? If this is what happens at the very start of our journey, who knows what dangers we will face later? I'm going home. They call this place the Swamp of Despond. People get stuck here all the time. My name is Help. You see, when you realized that you were a sinner, this place filled up like a swimming pool with your guilt and your fears and your doubts. The Lord has tried to fix this ground and even put good steps through it, but people still fall in all the time and get stuck in the waste of their own sin. I'm glad I was able to help you. You'd better be on your way now. You're right. Thank you. I can get back on my path now. I should be at the gate soon. Hey, hey, hey! Whoa, whoa there! Where are you going with that large burden on your back? I'm going to the small gate. Evangelist told me how to get there. Evangelist? Ha! I've heard this story a thousand times. If you want to free yourself from that burden, there's a much easier way. There is? Of course. My name is Mr. Worldly Wiseman. If you want to free yourself from that burden, and even go to heaven if you believe in such things, you simply need to obey the law and become a good person. I'm sure you have heard of the Law of Moses. You know, the Ten Commandments. We'll go right up this hill to that little town you see up there. That is the town of morality. Go there and you can learn to become a good person. Become a good person and you will earn your reward. Go on now. Oh, well, okay. Thank you.
Right up that hill. There you go. Learn to be a moral person and you will earn heaven. I was a fool to take this road. I will be crushed under the weight of this mountain. Ah. Who was it that told you to come this way? Mr. Worldly Wise Man told me. He said I could become a moral person and free myself. I see. Christian, the people in this town are in bondage. They are slaves to a law that cannot save them. Not one person has ever been saved by trying to be good. You are looking at this all backwards. You cannot earn heaven by being good because an evil heart can do no good. Stay on the path that I showed you and you will begin a real transformation and the good deeds you do then will be genuine and come naturally. Good deeds are the effect, Christian, not the cause. I was a fool. Will you help me get back on the right path? I will. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Goodwill, and you are? I am just a sinner from the City of Destruction. I am trying to flee from the wrath that is coming and reach the celestial city, the city of God. I am told that it is through this narrow gate. Will you please let me through? With all my heart. Whoa! Why did you pull me? That is the castle of Beelzebub on that hill. He shoots arrows of fire at all that approach this gate, hoping that they will die before they reach it. Ah yes, here they come now! We must run! Nonsense. We are perfectly safe. We are on the other side of the gate. Now then, where was I? This is the path you must now follow. It is as straight as a ruler. There are many other paths that branch away from it, paths that are very wide. Stay true to this straight, narrow path to the place of deliverance. Then you can finally be free of that burden once and for all. You must first, however, stop at the house of the interpreter. He can teach you many things. that Christian. He should be here by now. I hope he didn't get sidetracked. Ah! I was starting to get worried about you. Come in, come in. I am the interpreter. I keep it a bit dark in here. 
That's so you can pay attention to the things that you are supposed to pay attention to. Ah, here we go. I've put together a little presentation for you, you know, to make things easier. Uh, did you want popcorn? Uh, no, no thank you. Suit yourself. Roll the film! Do you know who this is? Christ? That's right. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the only person that God ever gave authority to to be our guide in all difficult places. Remember this well, for others have made false claims to speak for God, but their ways always lead to death. Now here is a man in a very dusty room. It looks like he is going to try to sweep it. Oh my, look at that dust fly. He will never clean it up like that. But wait a second. Let's see what happens when some water is sprinkled on the floor. Oh, look at that. The dust is cleaned. What does this mean? The room is the human heart. The dust was this man's original sin and corruption. When he swept, he was trying to clean it with God's law. He thought that he could clean it by himself. But he couldn't. He just stirred the dust up and almost choked on it. The water is the gospel of Christ. With it, the room was cleaned. So, his heart was cleansed, not by his hard work, but by the gospel of Christ. Here are two children. One is named Patience. The other is named Greed. They have both been told that they will have good things, but Greed cannot wait. He wants it all now. Patience is waiting quietly and is content. Since greed cannot wait, he has been given a bag of treasure. But soon his treasure is spent and he is in rags again. Patience is the last to receive her reward. And since she is last, her treasure lasts forever. Remember, the first must make room for the second. The second must make room for the third. But the last must make room for no one. Therefore, the treasure that is given last is eternal. And what is this? A wall is burning. It looks like a man is throwing water on the fire, but the fire cannot be put out. Well, look there. You cannot see him, but there is another person quietly pouring oil on the wall from the other side and feeding the fire so that it will never go out. What does it mean? The wall is your spirit. The fire is the fire of God working in you. The man throwing water on the fire is Satan, the devil. He doesn't understand why he can't put the fire out. The man putting oil on the wall is Christ. He pours the oil of his grace on the fire and will never let it die. Now, if you let your guard down, the devil's efforts grow stronger and the fire weakens, but it never goes out. Who is this man? Why does he look so sad? Well, why don't you ask him? Sir, what has happened to you? I once thought I was righteous, and I was happy with such thoughts. But I gave in to my lusts and desires. I wanted worldly things and turned my back to God. Now I have difficulty taking pleasure in His word. I have lost myself to my temptation. I am in an iron cage of despair. Since I have not counted His grace as a holy thing, I have shut myself out of His promises for this world. Lord, help me to watch and be sober, so that this man's misery never falls on me. Remember it well. You can lose your earthly blessings of joy and peace by choosing to give in to the evil desires of this world. Accepting Christ and walking with Christ can be... Two very different things. There is much joy in walking with Christ. Turning your back on Him puts you right back into the despair of this world. I will remember. You are ready to continue your journey, young Christian.
What does this mean? Are you Jesus, the Son of God? Are you here to die for the sins of the world? You see, I have this, my burden, my sin. I, I cannot rid myself of it. Will you be kind enough to bear it for me and die for me as well? Your sins have been forgiven. You are a new creation. You now bear the mark of Christ. It cannot be removed. Go in peace. You there, wake up! Why do you let yourselves sleep like this? Don't you see that you are in shackles? There is a great beast that walks this road. If he finds you like this, you will surely be eaten. Uh, I see no danger. Let me help you. Uh, yes, yes, uh, just a bit more sleep first. Every man must take his own path. You take your way, I'll take mine. It's all the same in the end. Uh, you go first, hypocrisy. No, no, formality. I insist. You go first. Are you sure this spot is the easiest way over? Positive. One, two, three. Well, hello there. My name is Formality, and this is Hypocrisy. We are going to the Celestial City. Why did you not come in at the small gate at the start of this path? Ah, who has the time? We come from the town of Boasting. It is our custom to enter this way. But you will be considered no better than thieves for entering this way. You entered at the gate, we climbed the wall, and here we all stand. How is your position any better than ours? Hmm? Hmm. hmm, the hill of difficulty. Well, this won't do. It's much too steep. Well, these two roads are much better. I'm sure they go around this hill and meet on the other side. You take that one, and I'll take this one. Don't you see that those roads are named danger and destruction? Do you not see the results of your trespass? You are just as quick to abandon the narrow path as you were to jump the wall to reach it. Bah! We will reach the Celestial City before you even reach the top of this hill. Let's go! Well, all 
Oh dear. Where am I? I'm sure the way out is right over here, maybe? What's this, lions? I will be torn to pieces if I do not turn back. You there! Is your faith so weak? The lions are chained. They are there to test your strength. Stay in the middle of the path and you will not be harmed. <sighs> Thank you. What is this place? This is a place built by God for pilgrims such as yourself. It is a house for God's family, a family that you are now a part of. They are here to give you support and to give you strength. Please come inside. Can I help you? Um, hello. I was told that I might be able to stay here for the night, as this place was built for the relief of pilgrims such as myself. I am tired and would enjoy resting in the company of people who walk with the Lord. Please, may I come in? My name is Discretion. Please, come inside and meet the rest of the family. Tell me, Christian, what made you leave your country? I had a terrible fear that everything around me would be destroyed. I feared for my soul. I am thankful that Evangelist found me and told me about the small gate that put me on this path. I don't know if I would have found it otherwise. Do you ever miss the City of Destruction? Sometimes I do, and I am ashamed of that. I fear that I will never be completely free of worldly thoughts. I am just glad that those thoughts are now my shame and not my joy. My joy now is looking ahead to the better country that has been promised to me. Did you not have a wife? Why did you not bring her with you? I did have a wife, but she could not let go of the world that she knew. She thought that her things brought her happiness. Did you try your best to persuade her to go with you? Did you perhaps give her a reason to think poorly of your cause? No, I was very careful to be loving in everything I said. In fact, what frustrated her was how careful I was not to sin, and how I felt that we should love others, even our enemies. She found that foolish. Well, if it was your love that turned her away, then you are not to blame. I know that you are tired. I will show you to your room and you may rest. We can talk again when morning comes. How beautiful. What is that place? Those are the delightful mountains. You will get there if you stay on the path. However, there will be difficult times before you reach them. You must pass through the Valley of Humiliation, then the Valley of the Shadow of Death, which is full of traps to snare your spirit. And then there will be even more dangers. But you will not be alone. Come with me to the armory. You will be given the armor of God. Stay on the path, keep your faith strong, and nothing shall be able to defeat you.
You will have wisdom. You will have strength. You will have God's protection. You will have the power of prayer. You will be able to overcome any obstacle. But never let your guard down, for the enemy is always watching. be frightened. You are from the City of Destruction, are you not? Yes, yes I am. Ah yes, I remember you. I've been keeping an eye on you. I am the Lord and King of the land that you come from, and you are one of my servants. My name is Apollyon. Tell me, why would you run from your king? It is true that I was born into slavery to you, but I grew up. I want to mend myself. Well, no king would let his people leave so easily, nor will I let you leave. Come back with me, and I will grant you as many riches as the world can afford. I have given my faith and allegiance to a new king. I would be a traitor if I went back with you. Oh, come now. People do it all the time. Besides, you have become a traitor to him already. You have strayed from your path time and time again. Yes, but my God is a king of mercy, and I know he has forgiven me. Uh, I am an enemy to this God. I hate him and his people. Be careful what you do, Apollyon. This is the Lord's highway. Don't you know that the followers of your God meet horrible ends, usually by my hands? It is the path that I choose. And no matter what happens to me now, I will be alive in God's kingdom long after you and this world have been forgotten. Well then, concerning what happens to you now, let's make the most of it, shall we? Chop off my tail, I will grow three more. You are outmatched, and you will fall. Rejoice not against me, O oh mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. <laughs> then take your best shot at me. After that, I will show you how wrong you are. You will never rise again. Not in this world or the world to come. <laughs> Thank you, O oh Lord, for delivering me. Run! 
Turn back while you can, it's horrible. Snares and evil spirits, horrible sounds of suffering. No one could survive it, turn back. The Valley of the Shadow of Death. Yes, yes, this way, this way. Don't worry, I know right where I'm going. This way, this way. He doesn't even know you are here. Go back the way you came. You will die if you keep going this way. You are about to fall. You want to go back, don't you? You want to turn back. You want to turn back. You want to leave. You want to run. You will die. No, you are not my voice. All I need is prayer. Lord, be with me and give me strength. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Uh, hello? Wait, uh, let me walk with you. Excuse me. Wait, can I walk with you? I cannot wait for you, but I will gladly walk with you if you catch up. Huh. What? <laughs> Uh, my name is Christian. Hi, my name is Faithful. Are you also going to the Celestial City? Yes, I am. And it will be good to have some company on the way there. <laughs> well, then you're in luck. Here's another fellow. Oh, hello, hello! Mind if I walk with you? I'm a good companion to walk with, as I enjoy talking about things that are good and righteous. Well, how wonderful! Well, it is a most wonderful thing to talk about religion and the Bible and God. It is very meaningful to talk about those things. Well, it is very good to talk about the way those things are meaningful in our lives. Well, that's what I said. It's meaningful to talk about those things. What a wonderful traveling companion we have found. <laughs> Don't be fooled by him. His name is Talkative. I know him better than he knows himself. His religion is in his mouth, not in his heart. Ask him how the grace of God has changed his life. May I ask a question? Ask me any question and I will have an answer. Yes, well, tell me then what God's grace has done in your life. That is an excellent thing to talk about. First, it makes me cry out against sin. Shouldn't it make you despise and hate sin? Well, that's what I said. I cry out against sin. Well, anyone can cry out from a pulpit against sin, but then be happy to let it live in their heart and in their home. Well, I also have great knowledge of religion and the Bible. Yes, but one could easily know all things about the Bible and still not believe. Just as a servant might have knowledge of his master's will, but not obey it. You could have a library of knowledge and not one word of wisdom. Wisdom is a gift from God. Huh. You set traps for me. We will just have to disagree. Well, you were right about that one. Well, hello again, good pilgrims. Evangelist, it's good to see you again. I hope the road has not been too dangerous. There is nothing the world can throw at me that I can't handle. Don't let yourself be overconfident. 
There are always more dangers. You are about to travel through Vanity Fair, a place where the world will try to sell you its many treasures, things that are poison to your soul. Even Christ himself had to pass through this way, and the devil offered to make him a prince over the fair and over all worldly things. Christ passed it by, and so must you. You cannot escape the world while you live in it, but you can keep it out of your heart. One more thing. Keep your faith to the very end, no matter what end it may be. Um, okay. Okay. Stuff! Get your stuff right here! Start a new life collecting and taking care of stuff. Keep it shiny. Everyone else will want what you have, and that makes you important. Popularity! Popularity! Claim it for yourself right here! Be the most popular guy in town! Be famous! Everyone will want to be you! Beauty! Don't you want to be more beautiful than everyone else? Come get it here! If you look better, then you will be better! Why aren't they buying anything? Did we miss something? Is there something else? No, there is nothing else. Carry on. Something is wrong with those two. Well, good evening. My name is Judge Hategood. It seems that you have several charges brought against you. You are charged with disturbing the fair. You are also charged with dividing the town. You caused quite a stir. And you even won a few people over to your dangerous way of thinking. Of course we can't have that. I hate to admit it, but many of the people in Vanity Fair can be easily pulled away if they think that there is something... better. Therefore, your ideas are not welcome. And by not participating in the fair, you make yourselves criminals. More to the point, by threatening to pull others away from us, you make yourselves our enemies. You are to be locked in the dungeon and beaten until you decide to join the rest of us. That is all. Yes, it's true. Two people came through yesterday and didn't buy a thing. They were offered titles, glory, wealth, houses, properties, crowns, jewels, and all sorts of things. They walked by as though none of those things mattered. Other people took notice of that and began to question the value of those things as well. The whole fair was in an uproar. So they put them in the dungeon? But why? Did they do something wrong? They disrupted the peace and upset the fair. How? All they did was pass through. They didn't say an unkind word to anybody. That's not the point. Their misguided beliefs are dangerous. But how? If people want to leave the fair and follow them, then they should be able to. Who are you to- Beelzebub will not tolerate this kind of talk. The fair is in chaos. You know what must be done if we wish these conflicts to end. Yes. Fetch me one of them. And if order is not restored, we will just make an example of both. Thank 
Faithful. Faithful. Wait. No, no. Faithful. Wait, no. No, wait. No. Well, hello. I'm on my way to the Celestial City. Sorry, I can tell you would rather be left in peace. I have come from Vanity Fair. You came from there as well, did you not? Okay, well, I'll leave you alone then. My name is Hopeful, by the way. Are you troubled because of your friend? You don't know anything about that. She was taken for no reason. Her death was in vain. You are wrong. Her death was not in vain. I was trapped in Vanity Fair, under its spell. The cruelty they showed to your friend opened my eyes. Myself and several others left Vanity Fair because of what happened. We saw how corrupt it was. I want to have faith like your friend. I am hopeful again because of her. This road was supposed to lead to the delightful mountains, but I don't know anymore. This road is only getting more difficult. I will believe you if you tell me that we have gone the wrong way. You have been on the path longer than I have. Well, look there. We should take that path. It is easier and leads through those fields. Okay, then. I can't see the road anymore. I'm sorry I led you this way. It's okay, Christian. Your mind was clouded by regret and anger. I should have kept us on the right path. We must not go further tonight. It will only get worse. We will find our way again when morning comes. Are you up there? Uh, uh, Hopeful, wake up! What? Time to milk cows. Um. Well, good morning. I hope you like your room. You will be here for quite a while, I'm afraid. 
My name is Giant Despair. You wandered from your path and onto my land, and now you belong to me. The days are blistering hot and the nights are painfully cold. You will feel the effects of this place more and more as each day goes by without food or water. See you in a few days. Christian, don't worry. We will get out of here, I'm sure of it. The Lord will provide a way. It was all for nothing. All of the places that I went, the things I boldly spoke of, the things I blindly believed. It was all for nothing. Even if it was real at some point, my doubt has surely undone it by now. I don't even remember where I was going anymore. I will never get out of this place. And that means that my journey was for nothing. I'm no better off than the people back in the City of Destruction. I will spend the rest of my life here, in more anguish and more sadness than I would have felt on any other journey to any other place, simply because I realize now that I may not ever get there. Or worse yet, it doesn't even exist. There's nothing left to give me hope. And that is where you are wrong. There is a way out. And it's been right there in front of your face the whole time. Look around you. This is your life. And you will never escape. I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to let you rot there for the rest of your short life. Do yourself a favor and end your suffering while you still can. Don't listen to him, Christian. This whole castle is built upon lies. The Lord will provide a way. We must only be patient and never lose hope. The Lord will provide the key. What would be a key to a castle filled with lies? What would be a key to a castle built upon doubts and fears? Hopeful! I may doubt, and the world may lie, but there is one who cannot lie. When I stood before the cross, God made a promise to me that I would be saved. My doubts and fears don't change a thing. God made a promise that goes beyond my feeble doubts, don't you see? His promise! We already have His promise! And that is our key! So you want to do this the hard way? 
Very well. I guess I won't have to finish you off myself. You have no more power over us, Despair. <laughs> We made it, Christian. The delightful mountains. The promised land for those who stay on the narrow path. Peace, contentment, and happiness for the rest of our days until it is time for us to enter the celestial city. I wish Faithful had been here to see this place. Don't feel sorry for Faithful. She is with her Lord in a place even more beautiful than this. I suppose you're right. Look there. A man is coming down the path going the wrong direction. Sir, you are going backwards. Backwards, you say? Well, yes, the Celestial City is the other direction. Oh, really? My name is Atheist. I once thought like you. I searched for the Celestial City as well, and let me assure you, no such place exists on this Earth. You must look beyond what you can see. The Kingdom of Heaven lies in the next world. You know, I met a man named Ignorance on my journey. He had a very interesting point about your religion. He said that it's silly to think that faith in Christ will get you to heaven, because one could simply say that they believe, continue to live a wicked lifestyle, and still get into heaven. That sounds a bit unfair, doesn't it? Well, his name was Ignorance for a good reason. A love for Christ and a wicked lifestyle never go together. That's why it is said that a faith without works is a dead faith. Not because works are required to go to heaven, but because real faith will produce real works on its own. A real faith heals a wicked lifestyle, and that will shine through in a true believer. Besides, God can see into the hearts of people. Do you think that God can be tricked? Someone may live their entire life acting out a religion through works of routine and ritual, then be turned away at the gates of heaven. God knows who his children are. Fools. <sighs> For a moment, I considered what he said. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm here for. What is this place? Beyond this wall lies the River of Death. It is the final passage before reaching the Celestial City. How are we to enter this river if we cannot see it? We must choose a good place to cross, plan our steps. Is there a way around it? You cannot see the river before you begin to cross, nor is there another way around. It is a step that you must take. Crossing the river can be peaceful for your soul or it can be terrifying, depending on the strength of your faith. <sighs> Very well. <sighs> I can't see anything. I can't see where I'm going. Christian, let your faith in Christ bring you comfort. It is He, not you, that will get you across the river. I can't make it through. No, Christian. I feel the bottom. We can make it. I can see the gate. 
My burden. I can feel it. My sins are sinking me to the bottom. I can't escape. No, Christian. Your burden is gone. Open your eyes. You're going to make it to the other side. No, it's too deep. I've been abandoned. My sin was too great. You have been made whole. Look there. He waits for you. He made a promise to you, Christian. Yes. Yes, I see him again. I see the other side. I see it. I... Christian, I want you to meet somebody. He's the one that pulled us out of the river. Yes, yes, I know. We've met before. This letter I write to my wife whom I love dearly. I am writing you this letter before I cross over the river of death. My destination lies on the other side. I wish now I could have convinced you to make this journey with me, but at the time I was unable to describe the journey at hand. All I had was an emptiness in my heart and a desire to fill it. Now, looking back, I can speak more clearly and tell you that my journey was not in vain. This I know. We are born into this world wanting the world, wanting possessions, titles, glory, wealth, but they are all fading. They are deceptions that cannot bring us happiness or peace. I pray that you will not sell your soul to the things of this world. Let your heart leave those things behind, for there is a promise that awaits you, a way to be reconciled with God in this life and in the life to come. It is true that we are born with a sinful nature, and I have come to know sin as anything I do that requires me to turn my back to God first. We are all guilty of this, and no amount of work we do can repair the damage done. Our deeds and efforts are unclean because we do them with our backs to God. The wages of sin is death, not the death of the body, but death of the spirit. It is by His grace alone that we have hope for salvation. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to bear that burden on the cross. When He died, our sin died with Him. Christ was then raised from the dead to prove that death has no power over those who follow Him. Christ has conquered death, defeated guilt, wiped sin away, halted sorrow, and given us a clean conscience before our Father in Heaven. It is the free gift of God we must only accept it. Let God's Word guide you. Let God's family give you strength. And let God's sacrifice pay your cost. All of this I pray, that you will begin your own journey, Christiana. Christiana.